Welcome to your close-up with the one and only Queen Aminata. I'm Women's Wrestling Army commentator Alyssa Marino, and in this exclusive limited series, we're going to be digging in and taking a deeper look at some of the Queen's matches here at WWA. Well, but first and foremost, thank you so much for joining me. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. Well, it's always a pleasure to be able to chat with you, and let's just let's just dig right in. So you were part of our first taping, The Journey Begins at FET Music Hall. How were you feeling as you prepared to make your Women's Wrestling Army debut? Uh, to be honest, I was so chill that day. <laughs> I mean, that's me every day, but I was extra relaxed. I was like, this is not a good thing. Like, I should not be this relaxed because like, you know, we were there with Beyond Wrestling too, and it was like just so much was happening. So many girls at the same time, some I didn't know at all, and some that I was like, oh yeah, okay, I'm familiar, you know, I'm familiar with these faces. But after that, I was like, okay, time to go in your corner, Amy, and just stay focused, stay calm. And that's all I did. And do you feel like it was kind of part of the locker room atmosphere that made it feel so relaxed, or was it just kind of the way you always carry yourself no the locker room was great honestly like everybody was like you know willing to work together excited to be there like first show so we didn't know what to expect at the same time so we had to like you know be professional but somehow like what's up what's happening like when when are we gonna start these things you know what i mean and, i mean knowing me i was just like i was sitting in my corner and actually i was chatting with holly dead and we were just like okay brother what's happening <laughs> so we're just there we, we love that sense of camaraderie. Um, and, and so at that taping, we did see you face the gift of Gab, Gabby Ortiz, and you told Alicia Edwards ahead of the match that you weren't really phased by your competition. But be that as it may, what was your mindset going into this first time matchup with Gabby? So again, yes, it's a first, it was a first time matchup and like I, I wasn't familiar with her work, but I knew me. You know, so I was like, okay, I know what I can bring on the table. So let's see what she's gonna bring on the table. But one thing remains clear, I'm the queen. Like I have to go in this match as a queen and I have to come out as a queen. I have to just steal the show. That's my mindset every single time I step, you know, foot in the ring. And I think we did a pretty good job. I think. I think you're right. So let's take a peek at that match right now. Toes, kicks, punches, chops, forearms has just serious intent behind it. You guys think so? Insane. Oh! What did I say? But Aminata was staring me down after that shot. Okay, if you need me to walk into your car later, I will. Holy cow. Cover. Sitting on the chest of Gabby Ortiz, not enough. Standing there letting Gabby throw some shots. Ortiz trying to get back into this one, taking it to the streets, but Aminata closed the gap. And now, once again off the ropes goes Gabby, taken down, throwing those bows right into the chest of Ortiz. What are you doing, girl? What's wrong? Oh, oh my lord! Right hand of the midsection. On, Gabby, Absolutely caving in Ortiz, now doubling over to the point that. Thunderclap. Got the queen in trouble in the corner, but took a little too much time. And now just a flurry of four Gabby Ortiz. And that may be what Gabby needs to get back in this one. 
Oh, just that quickly, the queen puts a stop to the flurry. Oh, went for the boot, but missed. And now Gabby with the roll-up. Is Aminata down? No. On the way to the corner. Aminata barreling in, throwing some, some juicy hip attack. Oh, my goodness. And a boot across the face of the gift of Gab. And, and that, Lenny, is, is juicy. That's what juiciness is. I get it now. Aminata now with a rear waist lock. Oh! Flashing some power. The German suplex. Oh, and face first. Now looking like she's locking oh. in. Oh, my God. The, the juicy the hold. Juicy. The juicy hold, and Ortiz has to tap. Winner of this match, I submission Queen. Aminata! And Lenny, the thing about the juicy hold is that it's it's not only inventive, it is effective. And, and it put away Gabby Ortiz and Queen Aminata now surveying her kingdom of sorts here at Women's Wrestling Army. Okay, so from having words with the official to you demanding that Gabby fight you, there seem to be a few moments of frustration for you during this very brutal bout. Can you can you take us through some of the emotions that you were feeling throughout the match? Okay, so if I tell you that I can answer to that question, that will be a lie, okay? Because after I leave the ring, half of the time, I do not remember what happened. Whoa. So yeah, this is the honest truth. And I cannot go back to bed, oh my God, like, okay, well, this is how I was feeling, you know? I know that I was feeling nervous, but at the same time in control. And that's all I can say, you know? So I know it's weird. I just... So you just go in kind of laser focused when yeah. you're in the matchup and then it's like, okay. Yeah. Wow. Literally. And I'm, I'm not joking about this. So sometimes I can't. That's why sometimes like um, I just crash after my matches. I mean, it happens rarely, but especially when I have too much happening. But that day I was, I was just chilling and eating and just sitting there so <laughs> i do not remember all i knew it's like well gabby what are we doing okay let's go <laughs> so yeah wow and i mean you always do compete with such intensity in the ring and this was definitely a strong way to start your wwa reign but how did you feel about the first impression that you made again uh, okay i hate talking about myself Sorry, y'all, but it's just, I don't know how I did. You guys tell me how I did, you know? I wasn't injured, so I think I did pretty good staying, you know, healthy and killing it, I guess. Shaking my juice. Yeah, I, I remember it doing was, it. I did that one, so. Things got pretty, it was juicy. It was juicy. It was juicy. Your question <laughs> was hard this morning. We're here for the hard hitting questions. And even though you don't love talking about yourself, we love to hear about yourself. But next up, we did see you at our Begin Anywhere tapings in Chicago for the Battle of the Queens. And Maria set up this main event match between yourself and then Queen B, where the winner would be declared the queen of Women's Wrestling Army. How did that stipulation raise the stakes for you? Honestly, I just think they just wanted an extra match on the card point blank because we all know who's the queen she's sitting right here so yeah thanks maria but you got your answer that you already knew well i caught up with you ahead of that match and i caught up with you and your opponent and things were getting a little bit heated what prompted you to approach and antagonize brooke valentine before the match you know a lot of people fight their idea i like to fight clean you know, because that's just me. So if I have something to tell you, I will tell you right in front of your face. And if you like it, just tell me. And if you don't, let me know. And I think she didn't. And we went in the ring. So, yeah, <laughs> that's that. <laughs> Maybe there was a mind game element to it, but it was settled in the ring. So let's take a look at that right now. This is a, a title that she holds with so much pride and it is a very confident woman uh, along with all the accolades and and the juicy that we that we talk about here that was the juicy right there that was the juicy but swept up See, by like me I, I don't think i can describe juicy but i know it when i see it 
It's like art. But now, too close to the ropes, Queen Aminata. Oh, hard hitting. And coming with a head of steam into the corner. Yeah, Queen B winding up has some incredibly, this is fitness meets agility in Queen B. And oh, went for that cannonball in the corner. Opponent back to her feet. Snapmare takes Queen B back down to the mat. Oh, oh man. Aminata. Oh, God. Deafening thud. With the. Oh. Apparently, Aminata speaks five languages. Oh, but. Brooke V with a little body language of her own as she is laying into the the Queen Aminata. Oh, oh, oh. And again, Face the keen first. intellect. Looking for that juicy maneuver. V now trying to fight back. Throw those heavy feet in the corner. Those high kicks, the agility on there display. You go. In women's wrestling army, there can only be one after tonight. Now Aminata winds her way over in the shoulders of Queen Beer down. Oh, shoulders are down. Back and forth. Back and forth they go. Who will it be? Who will reign the queen? Leverage and positioning back and forth. Boys to strike here again. Oh. oh! I did not expect Aminata to have such a decided edge when it came to striking in this matchup, but she has, and it has paid off in a big way here. Now, nothing but juicy oh! in the corner and a boot to the face. Coming right into your living room. Oof. Asking you shall receive. Queen Aminata asking if that's all she's got. Oh. Open palm strikes. Leaving welts on the chest. Jesus. Oh, blocks the lariat. Oh, headbutt! Queen B with a back elbow to Aminata. Aminata, the crossbody, is caught by Queen B. The follow-away slam. Set for that high mind. Oh. Cannonball in the corner. Bringing Aminata, steadying. Queen Aminata for an open palm strike, but Aminata returns fire. Back and forth, this unrelenting oh, strike, heavy Jesus. offense. Aminata, relentless, but looking, oh. looking for the pal, the spear. Took but a Aminata. chance and it did not pay off. Aminata, though connected. Queen B was looking for the B sting. But now Aminata, the juicy lock, the juicy lock is in. Is that it? Is Queen B gonna tap out? Oh. We saw this is how things ended for Gabby Ortiz, and that's how it ends for Queen B. So as we saw, you picked up another win and a meaningful one at that, but Brooke Valentine put up a hell of a fight. So did your view of the former Queen Bee change after that match? I don't know if she changed or not, but one thing I know, yes, yeah, she definitely delivers in the ring and those strikes were, <laughs> they were hard. <laughs> so I have to give her that. and. Um, yeah, she she brought her best, but her best was not enough to match Queen Aminata's best. So, yeah, thanks, Brooke. Keep working hard, keep fighting, and maybe one day we can do it again. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe. But either way, I think for Queen Aminata to tell someone that their strikes are hard, that's appreciation and that's a victory right there because you're you are one to to set that standard for sure. So. How did it feel after not only retaining your title of Queen of Women's Wrestling Army, but continuing your undefeated streak at WWA after that match against Brooke? 
it feels great to be honest because I feel like all the hard work, you know, dedication, traveling, training, everything up and down, you know, all the stuff that we go through that people don't see. And for somebody to validate that, you know, it's it's just amazing. And having the crowd behind you and even your peers like respecting you, it's just it's another level, you know, of respect. So at the same time, it's hard too because you're like, oh my God, I have to deliver every single time now, you know? But I use it as motivation, like, then just just move on with my life, you know? What happened, what, what happened, so you see. And from your mindset, it sounds like you really do kind of like leave things in the ring. I mean, even, even to the point of like, hey, what's in the ring happened, and now I'm, you know, in a new oh, kind yeah, of headspace. Definitely. Yeah, you cannot think things outside of the ring. Like, no, if you have something to tell somebody, just go ahead and let that person know. And I do not like to communicate through text or, you know, messenger. Like if you have something, I'm like, you know what? I will see you sooner or later. We can talk about it. You know, we can ash it out. We can fight about it. Whatever you want to do, we can just do that. But I do not take things personal. Honestly, I don't have time to take things personal too. With four kids, no, I cannot take things personal that's just me so. you're a busy woman there's no time for that I understand. no <laughs> <laughs> so so most recently we saw you in another main event at wwa in that hyper intense hard-hitting match with janai kai the kick demon and you two weren't strangers to each other as you crossed paths in multi-person competition just a few months prior but what was it like preparing to face in singles competition for the first time <laughs> uh again i was backstage chilling slash not chilling because i was dealing with some personal stuff but i knew one thing going in that match i we had to kill it that's it that was the only mindset like there's no way somebody is gonna mess up in this match and yeah i think that one was was great too so i'm happy about that I think a lot of others were happy about that as well. You guys totally delivered. We're gonna get to that in a little bit, but when you talk to us on Beyond the Bells, you shared and you even touched on it now, there was a lot going on in your mind that day, thinking about your family. Can you share, and, and maybe it was, you know, the reels and, and, and kind of getting into a, a mindset, but how did you maintain your focus going into this match with everything else that was going on? I just focus on one thing. We can only handle one thing at a time. And I do this every day in my life. So I have to do one thing at a time. I might have 10 things happening. I have to put the number one on top. Okay, this is the priority right now. And that match was the priority because at that moment I was right there. And then after that, then I can deal with other stuff, you know? So I don't overwhelm myself. I just, I can't, I cannot afford to do that because I only have me and me only in America. So it's just, one of those things you learn as you go. And I learned it the hard way, but I'm glad I, I was able to learn that in my self-control before jumping into wrestling, because I think that helps me a lot with every single thing that, you know, I deal with, you know, as a wrestler or something else. So yeah, I just had to focus on the match. Like that's it. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it can't be easy to kind of be your own support but the fact that you were able to learn how to clear your mind especially before something so incredibly physical as what you do definitely a, a good thing to have learned i'm thankful yeah and and we were thankful that we got to witness this incredible match so let's take a look at it right now great at game planning too for her opponents i think that's one of her strengths is finding opportunities and things that she may be able to exploit in an opponent and taking advantage of it. And she does hit very hard, but she may be in there for the first time in her women's wrestling army career against someone who hits harder than I Kai. And we are seeing it here, these forceful collisions. Wind up from Aminata. Oh, more even than I think to give herself time to heal. Try and slow down Janai Kai. Aminata in the ropes. Now, oh, 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 oh. Aminata. Telling Aminata to bring it on and oh! This one's starting to break down here. Oh, priming one another in the corner. These 
open palm strikes, thundering down. Oh. <laughs> Disrespect. Tony Van Amrana has, you know, a flashy oh. entrance and I'm not touching that oh, one. Oh, that's, that's a juicy, a very deadly maneuver. Not only physically deadly, but also the, just the mental, we talk about the disrespect. Now the cover, oh! Snap, snap and suplex. suplex. My Kai. Yeah, I'm not starting corner. to find herself here, it looks like. Got Kai in a bad way in the corner. It's like battle drums, another juicy attack. Off the ropes once more. Oh my goodness, cleaning the clock of Kai. Just driving Kai through the ropes in the corner. Naminata, winding back through. I mean, oh, and neck breaker. More frustrated. Oh, a sickening thud. Yeah, that was a, a definitely dull crack to the spine. Kai back I, on her feet. You know, I give Aminata all the credit in the world going toe to toe with a world class striker. Oh, no, no, no. Right, Kai, but you are playing a dangerous game. Aminata. Oh Sweeps Kai up. Aminata off the ropes. Knee driven through Kai. The cover from Aminata. Oh! oh! Desperation kick out by Kai, and Aminata is living. More kicks from the kick demon. I don't know if Aminata is trying to rope a dope tonight, Kai here. Oh, and a headbutt though. Trying to hope tonight Kai kicks or punches herself out. Aminata off the ropes. And the kick from Janai Kai. And now Kai with the Oh, what a right the hand. Oh, what a hellacious right hand from Aminata. And both women are down. Crowd on their feet here in Chicago. Has Queen Aminata on her knees, not the place for a queen to be. Lighten her up with the chaos kicks. Jedi Kai looking for that death blow. One slam, face first. Queen and Aminata, juicy lock. the juicy lock. The juicy lock, which has won in every single one of her matches here at Women's Wrestling Army. Kai's in trouble. Trying to force the shoulders down and make it to the ropes and does. Aminata berraged. Oh, oh a big spiral. Rarified air. Perching herself up on that top turnbuckle. Oh, double stop! Right through the chest! Cover! And that, no! That's not it! Janai Kai! Janai Kai keeps going! And Queen Aminata! Eyes like saucers! Disbelief! Aminata, oh, Janai Kai with the tornado kick! Janai Kai with the cover! Oh, Aminata, that's it! So, you could see that this match took a lot out of both you and Janai, physically, mentally, emotionally. Can you take us through the emotions that you were feeling after this match? <laughs> Crying. Um, trying to catch up on my breath. And happy too at the same time, honestly. Like, um, you know, respected. I think that's the biggest part of it too, you know? Like working hard and people validating, you know? So I always say, oh, I don't need somebody, somebody else's validation, but no, that's a lie. I think wrestling taught me, no, you, you need somebody else's validation for you to, 
feel like, hey, you did something right, you know, or you did something okay. So, yeah, so many things, but I'm, I'm glad I went through it with her. So that was that was the best part. So, yeah, I have to say thank you, Janai. And, and definitely like you touched on before, you know what you bring to the table, you know what you're capable of, but when you can when you can feel that that respect and that appreciation it's i'm sure there's nothing like it and even when the episode aired you shared the sentiment on twitter that we don't go for the this is awesome chant we go for the standing ovation did you feel like your efforts were appreciated in logan square auditorium what was that energy like yeah definitely um i felt it i lived it i it was everything. I, like every single part of my body felt every single thing. I know this is crazy to say, but I did. So when fans think like, you know, oh, it's just a wrestling match. Like I'm just here. I'm just one of those people. No, every single person matters at that point because we are all doing this together. Like it's a teamwork. Yes, we are in the ring trying to deliver putting our bodies you know, on the line and everything, but you guys sitting there paying and like supporting us. And you know, even when we look up and you know, we're looking at you guys, it's, it's a teamwork. So we appreciate you guys for supporting us. And I personally appreciate you guys. Like I love you guys because I know I, I never had a support system since I started. So except my training school. So people just standing there and loving me. I'm like, oh yeah, I love Queen. I'm, I'm like, I still cannot get used to it. Honestly, I'm like, wait, what? No, come on, like, get out of here. You know what I mean? I just cannot get used to it. So again, thank you. Thank you guys. <laughs> I know I talk a lot of crap on social media and I'm the queen. Yes, I get it. But at the same time, I have to give credit where credit is due. You know what I mean? So yeah, thank you. Thank you guys. Well, whether it was the fans in attendance, online, at commentary, this contest was considered a classic. But in this match, we did see your undefeated reign come to an end. So where do you go from here in Women's Wrestling Army? And how does the queen plan to regain her dominance? You know, in the ring or in real life, we're all going to feel defeated somehow one day. Everything will come to an end. It's how you go about it that makes the difference. So one thing I learned, I have to keep fighting, you know? And the other thing is, no matter who, you know, comes to Women Wrestling Army or who I'm gonna be facing Women Wrestling Army, I know one thing for sure. They know when they come in the ring and they're gonna be in the ring with Queen Aminata, they're gonna bring it. I don't have to tell them, bring it. They will have to bring it. So, yeah, I don't know where we're gonna go from here, but I know I will show up juicy, looking like a queen, and I'm gonna fight, put on my best fight. That's all I know. As you always do, and whether it's sheer survival or what have you, you managed to really bring the best out of, I think, everyone you share the ring with. So we cannot wait to see more of it at Women's Wrestling Army. Uh, now, as we wrap things up, we have a, I guess a little bit of a game that we've been playing here on Close Up. We do WWA roster superlatives. So the idea of voting which of your fellow roster members would be most likely to fill in the blank. So who would be the most likely to stay up late partying? Maserati. <laughs> I want to say this is the second vote she's gotten for that category. So very nice. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you actually, uh, Trisha Dora said that this was, was you, uh, most likely to believe that you can fix something yourself. I saw that, and honestly, she's right. <laughs> can you give us an example? Are you just very handy? I'm very handy. Like, I tried, like, I bought a house last year, and I'm trying to fix everything by myself. My brother is like, okay, this one, I don't think you did it right. I'm like, just, just go. It'll work. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> yes. So, so who would you vote as the most likely to believe that they can fix something themselves? I don't know. Me, I guess. Okay, fair. That's also fair. <laughs> Me again. Uh, who is most likely to have snacks on hand? Holiday. She always has like at least a drink or snacks or yeah, I would say holiday. Most likely to chat one's ear off. Oh, you know what? Last time I shared my, um, 
our room, or we share a room together, big swole. And we were catching up nonstop. She was just making me, I'm like, swole, get away from me. Just go away. Like, just, just go. I'm like, no, we, we can't do this. Just go. <laughs> lovingly, then, lovingly, I'm sure. Yeah. And most likely to be a superhero in disguise. Let's go with Janai. Because she does all the karate, sleepy stuff. Whatever. But yeah, let's do Janai. <laughs> okay, so Janai is begrudgingly your superhero in disguise. That's fine. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, it was so great catching up with you. And thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Um, we, of course, appreciate our friends at home for tuning in on Pro Wrestling TV and for subscribing at Brand Army for exclusive content. Be sure to get your tickets now for Anywhere You Land. It's taking place November 4th and 5th back in the Chicago area at the iconic Berwyn Eagles Club, where you'll be seeing the one and only Queen Aminata in action. We cannot wait, and we will see y'all there. Thank you, guys. Thank you again, Maria. I mean, Maria Ali. Ali. <laughs> I take it as a compliment. I take that as a compliment. <laughs>